No. Don't put a wall there, Haley. We're building a castle, not a playhouse. Sorry, Emma. Is this where the swimming pool's supposed to go? It's a moat, Ty. A moat. How many times do I have to tell you? Ah, oh, sorry, Chris. Does anyone know what time it is? Does anyone know what day it is? Oh, I feel like we've been playing video games for two straight months. Yeah, maybe we should take a break. Yeah. yeah. Ailey, why are you putting the kitchen on the roof? That doesn't make any sense. What, so what? It's not real, it's just a game. Yeah, but some of us actually like playing this oh, game. Uh, I like sorry. the game just I thought you everyone guys. liked me. Okay, okay, right. 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 All we do is fight. I thought friends were never gonna play this kitchen. Pause. Looks like we need some self-control. Self-control is the fruit of the spirit, which is uh, something God is doing in us to change the world around us. And I think it might save our friendship. In today's story, we'll hear about how self-control can help us with our words, and not a moment too soon. On pause. We decided Maybe. that the castle I would have a racquetball court it has in the basement. You don't want to swim room. with our I alligators, have a mud room. I mean, come on. Castle to be easy for The Bible isn't just a book of random stories. It's 66 different books that come together to tell one story. An incredible one about God's love for us. And now for an amazing story inspired by the book of James. Chapter 3. Verses 3 to 10. The Bible is filled with words of wisdom that encourage us to love God, love others, love life. Sometimes Jesus told stories to help people understand how God's truth played out in their lives. And you know what? That's what stories can do for you. In the book of James, we read, We put a small piece of metal in the mouth of a horse to make it obey us. We can control the whole animal with it. And how about ships? They're very big. They're driven along by strong winds, but they are steered by a very small rudder. It makes them go where the captain wants to go. In the same way, the tongue is a small part of a person's body, but it talks big. Think about how a small spark can set a big forest on fire. The tongue is also a fire. It sets a person's whole way of life on fire. No one can tame the tongue. With our tongues, we praise our Lord and Father. With our tongues, we curse people. We do it even though people have been created to be like God. Praise and cursing come out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, it should not be this way. Let's see how this truth might play out in someone's life today. Trish Lawson was thrilled to spend the summer after high school training to fight wildfires in California. It's gonna be the most exciting job ever. Nothing went quite the way she expected, though. Chief Tyrol sent the crew miles out into the wilderness. Everyone grab a shovel. Start digging. <sighs> Trish was already sweating under layers of fire-resistant clothing. Wait, what? I need a trench from that tree down there all the way up the ravine. But what about the fire hoses? Sadie, the leader of Trish's group, rolled her eyes. Don't be such a proby, Lawson. You gotta make a line and clear out all the dry brush that fuels the fire. Oh. Ugh, digging trenches was backbreaking work. After a few hours, Chief Tyrol lit a small test fire a hundred yards away. Trish laughed as she and her bunkmate Layla watched. <clears throat> That's barely a bonfire. Give me a hose and we could put it out in 20 seconds. No kidding. But in moments, a breeze picked up, and those tiny flames whipped into a wall of fire, racing across the ground, consuming dry grasses and scrub. Whoa! The fire line did its job. As the flames hit the trench, they lost their power and died out. Sadie smirked at Trish. You got a lot to learn, huh? Trish just scowled in response. Oh, and you're on to clean the bathrooms tonight. Trish was still annoyed as she and Layla returned to the bunk room after training. I bet she didn't have a single friend in high school. 
Layla nodded and rummaged through her locker. No kidding. Hey, have you seen my phone? No. I got it for graduation last month. I left it right here. Maybe someone took it? It was locked up. Sadie has a master key. <gasps> you think she took it? Up until then, Trish hadn't even considered it. But she was still mad about being put on bathroom duty. Well, she drives that really old beater car. I bet she needs money. I don't know. She ran back in the bunk room as we were all leaving. She's so bossy, she probably thinks she can take anything she wants. <sighs> Layla frowned and Trish headed for the showers. She didn't think any more about that conversation until later that evening when she was mopping the icky bathroom floor when Sadie stormed in. I hope you're happy. Hey, don't track mud in here. Chief just suspended me from duty because three people told her I took Layla's new phone. Oh, Trish had a sudden sinking feeling in her stomach. I didn't say anything to the chief. Yeah, well, Apparently you told Layla it was me, and she told every single person on the crew. I, I only said it could have been you. Even as she said it though, Trish knew the whole thing was her fault. I mean, she had said something mean and careless, and the whole thing blew up worse than a wildfire. Look, I really, I mean this. Layla sidled into the bathroom, red-faced. She held up her previously missing phone. <laughs> So, I found my phone, uh, stuck between the mattress and the bed frame. <sighs> Trish wanted to crawl into one of the stalls and disappear. But she took a deep breath and made herself look at Sadie, who seemed mad enough to breathe fire. I really messed up. What I said was mean and untrue, and I'm really sorry for losing control like that. For just a moment, Sadie's face cracked. Yeah, well, it hurt. Not to mention nearly getting me kicked out. You can put me on bathroom duty for the rest of the summer. Maybe I will. I told Chief, she wants to see you, Sadie. Clear everything up. Sadie turned and left. Without another word, Trish and Layla avoided each other's eyes. I guess I knew it wasn't true. I just wanted to blame someone. Well, I started it with just a couple of words. I should have had a little self-control and kept my mouth shut. And over the following few weeks, Trish felt like she spent as much time scrubbing toilets as fighting fires. Yep, she discovered, as James says, the tongue is also a fire. It sets a person's whole way of life on fire. No one can tame the tongue. Hello? Are y'all going to ignore each other forever? Well, we've done it now. We lost control and said things we shouldn't have, and it can happen so easily when you don't even mean it. Your brain thinks of something not so nice to say, and before you can stop it, your tongue is sending it out of your mouth. That's why James wrote that no one can tame the tongue. We get into so much trouble with the words we say, with our words, we talk back to our teachers and our parents. With our words, we say what we think are jokes when they actually hurt people's feelings. With our tongues, we tell lies and say bad words we're not supposed to. We simply cannot keep from saying things that hurt ourselves and others, at least not without help. No one can tame the tongue, that's true, but with the Holy Spirit, we can be powered up to do things that don't come naturally. So when you feel the urge to say something you shouldn't say, talk to God instead. Ask him to give you the strength to control your tongue. That's the one thing to remember today. God gives you the power to have self-control. When you put your trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit will show up and you'll be powered up with the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm gonna try and control my tongue from now on. Then maybe my friends will talk to each other again. We're fine now. Sorry I owed it you, Ty. I'm sorry too, to all of you. Yeah, I think we've been playing video games for too long. <laughs> I think you're right. 
It's about time we learned to control ourselves. Who's hungry? Me. Lunch it is. At least I think it's lunchtime. I really want a sandwich. Does anybody else really want a sandwich? Emma, do you have sandwiches? I'm pretty sure. Race me to the kitchen! Go! See you next time.